What is going on, everyone? Chris from PickDogs.com here with the wrap round. We're going to be breaking down the NHL action going down on Tuesday, February 6th, 2024. If you like this content, smash that thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel. You know, we appreciate our love and support here at Pick Dogs. Pick Dogs or the wrap round would not be where it is without your guys' love and support. So thank you so much for all that you've done for us over the years. Whether you, you know you bought picks, whether you didn't buy picks, doesn't matter. We appreciate everyone all the same. If you're looking for my best bets on the board, head to pickdogs.com. Click the premium picks tab at the top of the page. Got something for everybody on Tuesday. Got a $19 college hoops play today. Going to have quite a few college hoops plays on the board. Going to have a couple of NBA plays as well as uh, an NHL three pack on the board as well. So, you know, if you're looking to figure out which one of my plays from today's NHL card are my best of the best, head to pickdogs.com. Like I said, we'll get you sorted. You can take daily passes. Make some money and we can uh, build that bankroll up to go long-term or even just jump on a long-term pass right out of the gate. promise you guys, it's the best value for you here at Pick Dogs. You know, the plays, the longer term you go, the cheaper the plays become per play. And you don't have to go with just me if you don't want to. You, know, you can pair me up with any of your other favorite handicappers. We can go two for two for one or even multi-capper promotion if there's three or four of us that you like. And if it's within your means, if it's something that you're interested in, you can definitely go with all of us and we can make you that much more money. But, you know, we got the whole card to worry about later today we'll talk about it on our, on our morning show at 10 30 a.m eastern time but uh still got eight nhl games to look at here didn't have the best start to the all-star break so i'm gonna say if you if you're not comfortable with it maybe wait a couple games tread lightly on the first couple days out of the all-star break as teams get their feet back underneath them but that's not going to stop us here you guys know the drill are you ready i'm ready let's get into it Our first game comes to us from the TD Garden where the Boston Bruins play host to the Calgary Flames. And, you know, the Calgary Flames, they've got a win heading into the All-Star break. But let's face it, I mean, it might as well have been a loss. It was a one nothing win over the Chicago Blackhawks. It snapped a four-game losing streak, ended their six-game homestand on a high. But now they're going to go back out on the road in the first game post-All-Star break against the Bruins team that went into the All-Star break on fire. Winners of 7 of 8. They won back-to-back -back games. The majority of those wins came on the puck line as well. And uh, the only loss they took in that uh, that eight-game stretch was a 3-2 loss at home to Carolina. But I just think Boston heads and shoulders the better team in this matchup. I got to take the Boston Bruins here. I got to take them on the puck line. I just think there's way too much value to pass on at this kind of price. You're going to get some nice plus money with the Bruins on the puck line. You can take them in regulation if you want. But I'm going for max value here. I'm taking the Bruins minus 1.5. Up next, we head to the Key Bank Center where the Buffalo Sabres take on the Dallas Stars. And, you know, I've been trying to get a feel for this Buffalo Sabres team. And they did go into the break winning two straight, and they've won four of their last six. But this is one of those situations where I think you just got to take every matchup with a grain of salt. They beat the San Jose Sharks. They beat a struggling Kings team on the road at the back end of that West Coast road trip. They fell short against Anaheim and Tampa Bay. Their wins at home. San, uh, Chicago, San Jose, and they were also shut out by the Canucks. So they're beating the bad teams or the struggling teams. They're struggling against the good teams. I hate to break it to the Sabres, but the Dallas Stars are still one of the best teams in the league, especially on the road. Dallas went into the break winning uh, six of their last eight games. They have scored five, four or more goals in each of their last five wins. And I just still can't trust this goaltending for the Buffalo Sabres right now. So give me the Dallas Stars on the money line here at minus 164. Now we go to the PNC Arena where the Carolina Hurricanes take on the Vancouver Canucks. And this is a matchup that I I had a, not some problems with, but it was it was hard to really split hairs here um, because both these teams went into the break playing some solid hockey, especially the Carolina Hurricanes, who were much more stout defensively uh, over the course of their win streak as we, uh, we went into the All-Star break. They had allowed two goals or less in each of their three games during the win streak, two goals or less in five of their last seven games. But the, what it boiled down to me, though, for was that you still have a, a Vancouver Canucks team that's on a double-digit point streak. You know, they're playing some solid hockey right now. And right now, like I said, it's it's all about the fact that you're not going to get prices with this Vancouver Canucks team like this for very long, if at all, the rest of the way. I mean, this Vancouver team, 33-11-5 on the year, one of the NHL's best. And like I said, you're not you, plus money in the Vancouver Canucks is not something that you're going to find often. I get it. I get why the Carolina Hurricanes are favored at home in this one, but I got to take the Vancouver Canucks on the money line at plus money here. Now 
Now we have the Amaranth Bank Arena where the Florida Panthers take on the Philadelphia Flyers. And, you know, the Florida Panthers have been playing some solid hockey. The Philadelphia Flyers have been a team that we've been making money with hand over fist by just backing them on the puck line on the road where they're 21-4 and four this season. The problem is, is that a lot of those covers came when the Philadelphia Flyers were a, bit, a much stronger unit than they are now. You know, they've had some injuries that have happened. And most notably for Carter Hart, the off-ice issues that look like they're going to be around for a while. So it looks like he's going to be out of the uh, out of the, the fold for foreseeable future, if not permanently. And uh, that leaves Philadelphia to have to try to shoulder the load with Samuel Erson and Cal Peterson as your one-two punch in goal. And I think Samuel Erson just, you know, while he was playing well early on, it started to really falter. I mean, the, uh, the Flyers went into the break on a slide. They had lost five straight. They were blown out in a lot of those games. They had given up a combined 27 goals in those five games and were outscored 27, uh, excuse me, uh, 27 to 12 in those five games. So just makes it hard to get behind Philly there, even though the majority of those were at home. Um, but the last time they were out on the road, they were shut out 3 nothing by the Detroit Red Wings. The Florida Panthers have just been playing some solid hockey pretty much all year long. Pretty much consistent regardless of where they've played. 14-7-2 at home, 17-7-2 on the road. Entered the break winning four straight. I think this, this just boils down to the fact that the Panthers is a better team right now, playing the better hockey. So give me the Panthers on the puck line in this one. Now we head to the PPG Paints Arena where the Pittsburgh Penguins take on the Winnipeg Jets. And, uh, you know, I get why Pittsburgh would be favored at home here. And, you know, maybe the, the All-Star break was a chance for certain teams to hit the reset button. But the Pittsburgh Penguins are still one of the more inconsistent teams in the NHL. They have been for the better part of the season. If you combine the regulation overtime losses, it's a sub-500 team, 22-24. and 24. The Winnipeg Jets, on the other hand, sure, they went into the break losing three straight and averaging one goal per game in those three games. But they were swept by Toronto and they lost on the road at Boston. Three losses that aren't the worst in the NHL to take. You know, Toronto's still a very good team. The Boston Bruins, one of the best teams in the NHL at home. And the Winnipeg Jets, like I said, for the best part of the season, have been consistent. 30, 12, and 5 at, uh, overall this season. 14, 5, and 3 on the road. 16, 7, and 2 on the road. Uh, excuse me, 16, 7, and 2 at home, excuse me. Um, and I just, like I said, I just trust Winnipeg more. And not only that, I feel like we're getting the better team at a better price here. Not something you're gonna, not a price you're going to see with the Winnipeg Jets for much of anything this season. So give me the Winnipeg Jets at even money here. Now we're going to the Capital One Arena where the Washington Capitals host the Montreal Canadiens. And two teams that probably couldn't have been happy to see the All-Star break. Two teams that are also, like, like I said earlier with Pittsburgh, just looking to hit the reset button here. Montreal, you know, they entered the break losing four of five while Washington entered the break on a four-game losing streak. And side by side, you know, like I said, neither team playing all that well. But for this game, you know, while I'm not a huge fan of either side, and this isn't a game I'm rushing to the window to bet, I'd probably rather be on the side that's giving me either some plus money or a team like Montreal who I can probably trust a little bit on the puck line. They're 16-8 and eight on the puck line on the road this season. 10-9-5 uh, and five record away from home. So they've been competitive in a lot of spots. They've gone to overtime a fair bit. So I think there could be some value here with the Canadiens plus the goal and a half here. And maybe even sprinkling a little bit on the money line as well. The Washington Capitals, like I said, this is a Capitals team that has had their ups and downs. And they've been very streaky for much of the year. But they're also a team, like I said, right now that entered the break on a four-game losing streak and just aren't a team that's worth laying minus 160, minus 170 with right now. So give me the Montreal Canadiens plus one and a half. I'll put a little bit on the money line as well. Now we head to the Prudential Center where the New Jersey Devils take on the Colorado Avalanche and the Avs on the second half of the back-to-back -back here. Not really getting off to the best start post-All-Star break. Only scored one goal. In the other uh, loss to the New York Rangers, they took the early lead. And I'll tell you, I was if you watch the wraparound, I was on uh, Colorado yesterday, but unfortunately they fell flat. And uh, now they got to pick up the pieces and head to New Jersey. But here's the thing. The New Jersey Devils have not been stout whatsoever defensively. They gave up five or more goals in three of their last four games prior to the All-Star break. And the goaltending for New Jersey just has not been – it's not, it's been shaky, to put it nicely – Vitek Vanacek and Nico Dawes, just not a one-two punch. I want to back for the New Jersey Devils. But on the other side of the coin, it's likely going to be Ivan Prozvatov for uh, 
for Colorado. And if it's not pros with Hav, it's Alex Georgiev on, on the second half of a back to back. And uh, either way, I think you're going to see some tired legs for, for Colorado out on the ice and potentially in goal, or you're going to see a backup that's been shaky for the Avs for much of the year. I think this game is bred for goals here. Has a lot of co- um, excuse me, a lot of New Jersey games have been this season. It's going to be the over six and a half between the Devils and the Avs. And our final game on Tuesday's card is a heavyweight tilt in the Western Conference as the Golden Knights play host to the Edmonton Oilers. And on well, the Edmonton Oilers, that's we all know what the story's been for Edmonton if you've been following them or maybe if you, if you don't know about them, you've probably been living under a rock. This Edmonton Oilers team, 16 wins in a row heading into the All-Star break. And it seems on an absolute tear. And right now it's just about figuring out when to jump off and you might have hit that point. Um, for me, this is just about the spot. I mean... You have an Edmonton Oilers team that was rolling right along. And the, the reason that Edmonton was rolling right along is because they really didn't have a whole lot, like really long layoff between games to where, the, you know, the winning streak could have cooled off. I mean, the goaltending has been outstanding for the Edmonton Oilers. Two goals or less allowed, I believe, in the last 14 games of this win streak. It could be wrong on that exact number, but they've been playing extremely well defensively. The problem is, is that, you know, you're now, you know, you had a week layoff, you know, Yes, Connor McDavid said in the All-Star break festivities that they were focused on this game against Vegas. They couldn't have cared less, the Oilers, about the All-Star break. But coming into this game, trying to focus up. But again, you had a a week-long layoff. Kind of wonder if there's going to be some rust here. Maybe they come out a little bit flat. The Vegas Golden Knights, despite the issues that they've had this season, still 18-5-2 at home this season. Probably used the All-Star break to get healthy. And you're not going to get the Vegas Golden Knights as a home underdog. I get why the Oilers are favored here. And if you wanted to jump on the Edmonton Oilers to keep the win streak alive, I would not blame you. I, to me, this just feels like a logical spot where it could fall, where where the losing streak could end. You know, it, it could, like I said, could, could keep going here for sure. But I'm going to take a shot here on the Vegas Golden Knights at plus money at home to round things out. That's it. That's all the NHL action for Tuesday, February 6th, 2024. If you like this content, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Smash that thumbs up and hit that notification bell in the description of this video below to make sure that you're notified when the newest and freshest content drops here at Pick Dogs. If you're looking for my best bets, again, you can find those at Pick Dogs Premium. And make sure to let me know your NHL picks in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Good luck.